Everybody participate with me. Hold up the four number, four, four digits on your hand. Just hold up four. Hold up high. That's what we're talking about today is the personality four on the Enneagram. You put your hands down. Thank you for doing that. If you haven't been here with us, let me tell you what we've been doing. What we've been doing is we've been talking about gaps that exist between us as human beings because of our personality differences. There's gaps that form. And we feel like we're not connected to the people that we really want to be connected to. And the reason why is because you think one way and they think another way and you can't figure out how to, to cross that divide that's between you. And those aren't bad things that you think one way and they think another way, but you have to figure out how to close that gap. So what we've done is we've taken the insight of a personality typing system called the Enneagram and we've combined it with the wisdom of the Bible to help you figure out how do we close this gap and build better relationships with people. Every week we're talking about a different personality and telling you here's how you build a better relationship with this kind of personality and today we're talking about personality type four. Now, I have been saying some of the same things every week in my message because I think it's important for us to hear it over and over and over again, but every time it's a little bit different because I'm talking about a different personality. So I realize that some of you could probably say what I'm about to say because you've heard me say it before, but I challenge you to hear it afresh this time because I'm talking about another person who needs you to hear it. So there are some of us in this room and you may work with somebody who is a four on the Enneagram. And if you don't work with them, there's a possibility that you're somebody who could say, I, I live with one. And there's some of you who could say, I, I attend class with one. And then some of you could say, you know what, I'm related to a four. And then everybody else in the room is like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I've never heard of the Enneagram. Like, I'm not into the personality stuff. That stuff is weird. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm glad you're curious, by the way, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to summarize for you the personality of who the Enneagram describes as a type four, the romantic. So here's what the Enneagram tells us about personality type fours. It tells us that they are authentic, creative, emotionally strong people who awaken you to the beauty of the world. And they are people who help guide you through rough emotional terrain that the majority of you do not want to pass through. They are people who are on a lifelong quest to discover what's missing about themselves, which means they can easily slip into this pattern of projecting an image of, them, of, of themselves that show how they're unique and special. So based on this tiny description of someone who is this kind of personality. If you think you know someone who was a type four, will you give me a mm-hmm? Okay, that was most of you, but that wasn't all of you. So if you're still not sure if you're connected to somebody who was a four, then maybe this will help. If you need someone who can spot a phony a mile away, <laughs> or someone who can bring out-of-the-box suggestions to the table, then the person you would probably need to call is a four. And today we're going to talk about how to build a better relationship with the fours in your life. That's right, Kira. You take those notes, girl. <laughs> and I want to start with this. You know, the fours, I was thinking about the message this week and how I could deliver it that would really represent you. And I really wanted to be able to deliver this message as a musical. Like, I really wish I could do that for you. I just deliver this message as a musical, act and song and everything and do the little dance. But I want to warn all of you, that's not a good idea. Because when I was in the fourth grade, check this out, trying out for our church Christmas musical. Tried out for it. Don't know why I did, but I tried out for it. Maybe one of the worst rejections of my life. Because I tried out the only boy for the only boy part in the musical and didn't get it because a girl who was also my age tried out for the girl part but they decided to give her the boy part as opposed to a boy who tried out for the boy part which shows you my skill in acting and singing so I'm going to spare all of you the misery and the agony of watching me perform this message. I'm just going to give it to you straight up, all right? I wish I could do it in song. You just have to think of it in your head, <laughs> what it might look like for Coy to make a fool of himself. So there are gaps that exist between us and fours. And the reason why those gaps exist is because of a lie that fours often believe. 
And the lie that they believe and the lie that they are told is that it's not okay to be ordinary. It's not okay. It's not okay to be ordinary. You can't be like everybody else. Like fours honestly believe. It's not something they try to make themselves believe, but fours truthfully believe that there's something missing in their essential makeup. <laughs> and this belief drives them to project an image that makes them seem as though they are separate and, and different from everyone else. That's what it drives them to do because they want to show that they are special and unique, which is why when a four gets a tattoo, and you've heard me say this every week, because they will, they will get tattoos, which is why when a four gets a tattoo, they will get the most authentic, it's not going to be fake, it's going to be authentic, the most authentic, artistic, tragic, romantic, Deeply meaningful tattoo that none of you could think of in a million years because you're not as deep as they are. And guess where they're going to get their tattoo? Somewhere that's not normal. <laughs> they'll get a tattoo and they'll tell you about it and you'll be like, where did you get your tattoo? And you'll be like, oh, I would have never thought of putting a tattoo there. I was getting my hair cut uh, recently, I think this week. By the way, one of the college students said to me, I was on campus at Southeastern, I was invited to teach a class for... Um, Dr. Gomez, I don't know if he's a doctor. I think he's a doctor. I don't know. Uh, for Ben Gomez. And um, I, I saw one of the students that come to church here, and he's like, Pastor, you got your hair cut. I am so glad you got your hair cut. <laughs> he's like, you needed one. I'm like, don't ever come back to my church, man. <laughs> so I was getting my hair cut, and, I, and, and I, I don't go very often because I am cheap. I'll admit that. I, I don't like paying for haircuts. And it feels like every time I go back, they raise the price. I, it started off at twelve dollars. Now it's twenty-two dollars. Forget my. That doesn't. Maybe to women that doesn't sound like a lot, but to me that sounds like a lot of money to get my hair cut once a month. You add that up, that becomes a lot of money in a year to get your hair cut. Twenty-two dollars. And so, the last time I went in, it went from twenty to twenty-two. And I, anyway, I, I don't go a lot because I don't want to spend the money. I'm cheap. And so when I go in, there's oftentimes new barbers in the shop because it's been so long since I'd been there last. And so I went in this time, and there was another new barber in there. And he was across from where I was getting my hair cut. And I was, I'm, I'm always curious. I don't know any other guys in the room. But when I get my hair cut, I always believe that the barbers sh sh themselves should have good haircuts. Because I feel like if you're a barber and you have a bad haircut, that I don't want you cutting my hair. Like, you should always be clean. Like, your hair should always be cut and trimmed. And so I was looking at this guy's hair, and it was a pretty good cut. He, he had the... I don't know, like the mohawk thing, um, kind of like Connor. You, most of you know Connor in the room, although it wasn't curly hair. It's where you, you leave a lot of the stuff on top, and it kind of comes down in the back into a little peak. Um, it's, it's sort of a reverse mullet, I think is what I call it. And so he had this haircut, and, and it kind of came down to a peak. It looked pretty good. It was a good fade. And as I was looking closer at the back of his head, I noticed something not normal, and that was he had a tattoo showing on both sides of his hair where he had shaved it down closer to the skin. And I was thinking, man, that dude has to be a four. <laughs> like, he has to be someone who thinks I gotta get this tattoo somewhere where nobody else would get it. And I'll only show it when I wanna show it when my hair is trimmed a certain way. But that's kind of the way fours are. They, they don't do things like everybody else. They wanna be just a little bit different, maybe a lot different so that people think, wow, there's something special about them. So maybe, Maybe there's times in your life where you want certain people to be with you, and there are times in my life when I would love to have a force standing there or, or sitting right there with me. So let me tell you three times when I would love to have a four with me. I would love to have a four with me if I am interviewing people to join my staff. <laughs> like if, I, if I'm trying to find people to join my team and be a part of our staff and be somebody who, who gets a, a salary and has responsibilities and, and oversees an area, I want a four because a four will know if that person is putting up a front right away. They're not going to be tricked. All those who come into the room just trying to get the job to get the job, they don't want it for the right reasons. The fours are going to be able to tell me right away, hey, Goy, you shouldn't hire this person. <laughs> like after the meeting, they will say, no, that one's out, throw them in the trash. Like not the person, but the papers. And just don't hire that person. So I would love to have a four when I'm interviewing. I would love to have a four when I'm going to watch a musical. 
Because of four, most of them will know every single musical that exists in the world. And if you take them with you to a musical, they're likely to sing the songs of the musical you're going to on the way to the musical, just having a party. And then as you get to the musical, they're going to be so excited, they'll tell you all about it if you don't know about it. In those moments where the musical gets really long, which I feel like they do sometimes, I am not, I'm sorry for it, I am not a huge musical person. Uh, Brooklyn and I had Broadway musical tickets when we lived in Texas without kids and had money to spend back then. And, and, and I went, we went and watched Les Mis, and it was good for the first half. And I thought, at the break, we should go home because <laughs> it had been so long. And, and, and it was okay. It was, it's a good story. And then we watched Phantom of the Opera. You all ever seen that? There's like 16 endings It felt like in the Phantom of the Opera. And I'm like, this is way too long. Like, there's way too much going on here. But but fours, they they like, wow, that was way too quick. Like, I could watch that again and again and again. So if I'm going to go watch a musical, I want to take a four with me because they'll they'll help me enjoy it. And on the way home, we'll just sing those songs and have a good time and get home and celebrate that we just went and watched a musical. If If I'm putting together a creative team, of people who were trying to come up with a, a new way to do a project, and I want a four on that team. Because when the seven is machine gunning all these ideas, like, I got all these, I got this idea, this idea, all these ideas, and the one sitting there going, what is happening? What is happening right now? How do these people have these many ideas? Like, should we have a plan for this? As the seven is like shooting off all these ideas, the four is somebody who can catch a couple of them and say, I think I can do something with this. I can do something with this. So I want a four with me on my creative team. But you know what? Some of you are sitting here and you're fours. And I want to see if this is true about you. If you're sitting here and and you're a four, then you may identify with this thought. There may be times in your life, maybe a lot of times in your life, where you will wonder, do I really fit in? And where do I belong? Because in the back of your mind, there's a question that you ask that maybe you don't even know that you're asking. And the question that you're asking as this kind of personality is, well, who am I if I'm not special or unique? Because if I'm like everybody else, then who's going to come and love me and accept me because I look like everybody else? And that's something that we love about you fours, that you project this awesome, different, unique self. We love that about you. But that's also the thing that creates a gap between you and me and you and everybody else. Because you don't ever sometimes get to the place where you realize that somebody loves you just the way you are, even if that's ordinary. So what I want to do is I, I want to take one verse, like if I could take only one verse, and give it to the fours of the room And tell you, listen, please just commit this to your memory. Don't forget it so that you will always have its truth in your pocket with you. A truth that I believe can set you free. Then what I would give you, I just sprayed that one. Do you see that? I just sprayed that word. (laughs) What I would give to you is the gospel of John chapter 15, verse 11. This is Jesus speaking. This is Jesus speaking, and let me tell you what he says. He says, I have said these things so that my joy, Jesus says, my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Jesus says, I have said these things. Listen, he separates two different kinds of joy. He says, I have said these things so that my joy, Jesus says, my joy, not your joy, my joy, so that my joy may be in you. There's a difference between your joy and Jesus' joy. I'm just gonna tell you that. There's a big difference between Jesus' joy and your joy, and Jesus says, I have said these things so that my joy may be in you. And then he says something interesting. He says, so that your joy may be complete. In other words, Jesus has to give you a bit of his joy in order for your joy to have all that it needs in order to be what? Complete. And that's something, that's a word that fours think about all the time is, am I complete? Am I complete? 
Am I missing something or am I complete? And what Jesus is saying to the floors in the room is if you are someone who wants to be full of joy, then I gotta give you some of mine so that your joy and who you are feels complete. Now in these words, we have to focus on a phrase that Jesus says. Jesus says two words I want you to listen to. He says these things, these things, Jesus says. And when Jesus says these things, these things that he's talking about is summarized in verses one through 10. You can go back there yourself sometime, maybe after the service and read those words where he summarizes what he's talking about. But the essence of these things that he's talking about is summed up in verse four. So let me tell you what Jesus says. He says, abide in me as I abide in you. Or live in me as I live in you. Or make your home in me as I make my home in you. In the first century context, Jesus uses the metaphor of a branch connected to a vine. And I think some of us in the room, we can understand that. A branch connected to a vine is how the branch produces fruit, correct? But not many of us in this room work with vines or branches, So I want to bring us into a 21st century metaphor that I think can help us think about it here today. I want you to think about this. I want you to think about a toddler crawling up into the lap of a loving parent or grandparents and kind of making their home right there. Have you ever seen this happen before? Or or maybe you've had this happen to you before as a parent or a grandparent or a babysitter or a brother or a cousin. I, I don't know. You've had a little kid come and just want to cuddle up with you. When I was growing up, my younger sister, she's 10 years younger than me, and and we grew up in Ohio, and the house would get so cold. Uh, Our house was over 100 years old, and we didn't have central heat or air in the upstairs, and all the rooms were upstairs, and and I don't know what the temperature was when I was growing up. I'd be willing to bet our house was in the 50s in the middle of the night in the morning. And so in the middle of the night, all of a sudden, I would feel a little human get into my bed and curl up in the fetal position and just suck the body heat off of my body because she was freezing to death. And she did that almost all the years uh, of my high school uh, life. She would just come and want to just make her home in a place that made her feel safe. It's funny because, you know, last night, was one of the cooler nights of, of we've had in Florida in a while, and Brooklyn's out of town, and, and I, I got up early. It's so cool. I have a daughter who says, Dad, we got to get up early tomorrow, right? And I'm like, why? She's like, we got to work out together. My daughter wanted me to get up early this morning and work out with her. That is killer right there. I'm like, yeah, I'm, that is awesome. You're making me work out. But I got up a little bit earlier and uh, went into my room where my other daughter was, and she was sleeping past the time she normally sleeps. And so I just went in there and crawled under the covers and just put my arm on her. And I'm like, well, this, this, is, what, this is a good place. This is, this is home. And then I went into Kira's room after that, and she was just waking up. And I didn't even get close to her yet. And I started crawling up on the bed. And she said, Dad, this hasn't happened in a long time. And just, isn't, it's fun to just be with someone, isn't it? and feel at home. And when little kids crawl up into their mommy or daddy or grandma or grandpa's lap, the rest of the world doesn't exist. Hmm. But if you separate that kid from that person, what happens to them? They don't have that same sense of confidence and completeness and wholeness. And so what I think Jesus is trying to say to us is it's critical for you to be intimately connected to me. It is critical for you to be intimately connected to me. As long as you're connected to me, you will find your home in that place and you're not gonna be afraid and you're not gonna feel incomplete and you're not gonna feel like there's something missing and you're not gonna feel like the world is against you. You're gonna feel like you're in the safest place place that you could possibly be even though the things around you may be going off in chaos 
I, I mean, there's kids who live in homes where there is chaos happening. Brothers and sisters fighting, mom and dad's not doing their responsibilities. But if they're in that house with somebody who says, just crawl up in my lap, you're going to be okay. They don't care what else is happening because they know they're safe. And what Jesus is saying is, if you will do that with me, you will know there's nothing missing in your life. Which brings us to the point in this message, it's important for all of us in the room who aren't fours. Because what I want to say to you is if you want to build a better relationship with a four in your life, then you have to help them believe this truth. And the truth that you have to help them believe is that you don't have a missing piece. You don't have a missing piece. There's nothing missing. And how you can help them believe this is by appreciating them for who they are and nothing more. Just appreciate them for who they are. They don't have to be anything else. They don't have to be special. They don't have to be unique. They don't have to be different. They don't have to be awesome. They don't have to be weird. They don't have to be anything but who they are and you appreciate them for that. Like you love that about them. Now I know there's a hundred, maybe a thousand different ways that you could do this, but I like to keep it simple. So I'm gonna give you three. There are three things that I think you can do to help the fours in your life believe this truth. And one thing that you can help them do or that you can do for them is to acknowledge and recognize their authenticity and their originality. Recognize it and how valuable it is because fours work extremely hard, like extremely hard to be true to who they are and how they feel. And so what they need you to do sometime is to recognize that like stop in your life and tell them wow you are so authentic and original and true to who you are and here's how it makes a difference in our world so let me give an example of something you could do fours would love this by the way they would love you to do this fours would love for you to write them a letter they would love it and and, and you get out a piece of paper they would really love it if you got out some pretty paper or maybe some artistic paper and, and drew some, something on it. I make it special, not just blank white paper. But they would love for you to get out a piece of paper or a card and write them a letter. And in that letter, they would love for you to tell them how much you recognize and appreciate the depth of who they are and how that makes our world a more beautiful place. They would love that. They would love it. A second thing that you can do to help them believe the truth that they need to believe is to give them opportunities to express their creativity. Fours are naturally in in, in touch with seeing things from a different point of view. They just see things from a different point of view. They have out-of-the-box ideas. They just see things naturally in a different way. And so if you want to connect with a four and help them feel like they are somebody that you care about, then give them opportunities to open up spaces and, and places where they can, they can ideate and create things. And I know some of you in the room who have different personalities, you like to draw boxes around people, right? Because people have to have boundaries. I'm that kind of person. I don't want somebody just to be able to do whatever they want. There has to be some form of boundaries because if you just don't get boundaries, I mean, maybe people could just go all over the place, especially if you're giving them something specific to do. So I want to give you an image. If you're related to a four, you're in relationship to a four, it's okay to, to draw a box around them. I'm going to tell you that it's okay. People need boundaries. But when you draw that box around them and then you supply them with materials to be able to create something, All they're asking you to do is not tell them how to do it. All they want from you is say, here's the stuff, now you find a way to create it. If you do that for a four, they will be so excited. And guess what will probably happen? They will create something that you couldn't even think of in your mind, and you will look at it and say, whoa, you went way past the point where I could have taken myself. Thank you so much for what you've done. Will you do that again? (laughs) A third thing that you can do is to acknowledge their feelings without trying to cheer them up. (laughs) Like stop trying to cheer them up. Fours are in touch with their feelings and they're okay with their feelings and they don't want anybody to be superficially trying to say, hey, smile, 
Come on, put the smile on. Let's go out and do something fun. Like that's the times when sevens get really annoying to fours. Like they get really annoying to them because this, the four just wants to sit there in it a little while. And the uh, the four wants to sit in it a while, and the seven wants to run away from it. From it. So the seven's trying to pull the four along and say, let's, let's go do something fun. Let's get out of here and, and go do something fun. And the four's like, nah, I just want to sit here for a little while and, and feel it. Because when it comes to emotions, uh, fours aren't the kind of people who would want to hop into a sports car and speed past their emotions. Fours are the kind of people who, with emotions, they would rather be starting in this place and take a really slow, leisurely walk past their emotions because they want to see and experience it because they know there's something important about it. As an example, I was riding bikes with Brooklyn around town. Maybe you see us around town riding bikes. We're like the bike family. I ride bike to, to meet people at Starbucks, and they're like, wow, you rode your bike here? And I, like, I try to ride it everywhere, so we're the bike family. And you, you, you bike a road, and, and you drive down a road, and it's a completely different experience. So the other day, I was riding bikes with Brooklyn, and we were passing houses, and Brooklyn was like, whoa, did you see that house? How cool it was? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I've seen that house before. And then we go a little bit further, and she's like, whoa, did you see that house? <laughs> I have never seen that house before. And about 10 more times, Brooklyn was like, whoa, did you see that house? And the only reason why she was recognizing the house is is because we were going slow enough to see them. And a lot of us in this room, we want to go past our emotions so quickly that we never see them. But a four goes so slowly that they see them and they know how to allow those feelings to change them. Isn't that good? <laughs> So if you want to help a four build a better relationship with them, then acknowledge those feelings without telling them to cheer up. Now, I realize there are some of you in this room, and you're struggling in relationship with someone who is a four. And so you're listening to me, and you're thinking to yourself, I don't see how this is going to work. Because how am I going to help someone who is a four, who you describe as a romantic, if I tell them that their tragic story isn't as true as they think that it is? It's not that real, fours, is what you might want to tell them. Or what I'm kind of telling you to tell them is not as real and tragic as you think it is. And I know you have good reasons to believe that fear that things aren't going to work out if you try some of these things. But can we believe something different for you? Can we believe that you can be transformed? Can we believe your relationship can be transformed, the Bible says, by the renewing of your minds? Can we believe that God can change your minds? Can we believe that God can help you see yourself in relation to that person differently than you ever have before? And then when that happens, that person is set free from carrying around the burden they've carried their entire life that tells them you have to be special and unique and instead appreciate them for who they are. And then when you appreciate them for who they are, they no longer project this image that says, I'm different from everyone else. And then they are set free to live in the belief that I am complete. That's the power that God gives you as a human being in relationship to a four, is that God wants to work through you to help that person make your home in Jesus by allowing yourself to tell them that they are loved for the way that they are and they don't have to be anything else. And when that happens, promise, I say, like I, I promise you, on the, when that happens, you will discover something beautiful you've never discovered before. You will discover that beyond this special self that the four projects, you will discover a self-accepting person who is emotionally strong enough to dig down deep to find those things that are unique about you rather than focus on the things that are missing in them. And from that place, together you can build a better, stronger, healthier, closer relationship. Stand with me. I love talking about this stuff because I believe it's, it's where we all live. We all live wanting a better relationship with people. And I'm talking about you, and I'm talking about your relationship to someone else. And those things, man, they're so important. But can I talk to you about something else as we close? Can I talk to you about your relationship to God? I want to talk to you about your relationship to God. And what I want to tell you about your relationship to God is this, is that when God looks at you, God never sees that there's something missing. 
When God looks at you, God never says, wow, that person needs to be more special and unique. Because God said, I am the creator. I am the one who formed you in your mother's womb. I am the one who can count the hairs on your head. And when I create someone, I don't create someone who's incomplete. I only make things that are complete. I am the potter in which the clay you were in my hands. And when I formed you, you were perfect the way that you are. You are created in my image. When God looks at you, God's saying, don't go try to find something that's missing because everything is already there. And so for some of you who are here, maybe you're not a four, but maybe you are in relation to God trying to prove your special and uniqueness to God in order for God to love you. And God says, you can stop because I already love you and I already accept you and I already believe in you. And I know you can create things because I create things. And I know you can form healthy relationships because I form healthy relationships. So what I wanna do today is I I want, I wanna pray with some of you because some of you here, you may not know God. And your image of God is that you've gotta project an image that says, I'm worth it to you, God. And I'm telling you here that you don't. And so maybe you want to try to start a relationship with God in that way, just believing. Like, what if you today could imagine yourself crawling up into God's lap and making your home there so that you could feel safe enough to live your life full and complete? So I want to give you a chance to do that. Will you all pray with me? God, there are people here who don't believe they have everything they need to be loved by you or by anyone else. And they're always trying to find that thing. What am I good at? What talents do I have? What what skills? Why can't I, why can't I sing? Why can't I, why can't I speak? Why wasn't I good at sports growing up? Why, why do I look like I do? God, you look at us and you see us all the same. And when you look at us, you, you, you tell us it's okay to be ordinary because to be ordinary means to be one of your children. You call us your sons and your daughters. So God, help us be okay with being who you created us to be and knowing that we're not incomplete, but believing that you put us together as a whole piece. If there's anything missing, God, it's not something in us. It's our relationship to you. So God, help us to have that relationship to you. There are people here who call themselves followers of Jesus, and I don't think that they're lying, but they're just not in that relationship to you. They're not abiding in you. They're not living in you. They're not making their home in you. They're they're, they're very rarely in your presence. They're very rarely in a place where you are. They're not spending time with you in prayer and they're not spending time with you authentically in worship and they're not around the body of Christ and they're not serving our world through compassion and they're not, they're just not around you, God. And, And they wanna follow you, but you're so far away They've gotten to this place where they feel like there's something missing in them and all that it is is that they, need, they just need to run closer to where you are because you say when we are with you that you put your joy in us and our joy is complete. So God, complete our joy today. If somebody's here and they want that with you, let them say these words. God, help me believe that there is nothing missing, that it's okay to be me, and that you can make me complete. In your name we pray, amen. 